We are getting to know more and more of our Steelers draft picks, and I am pleased to be joined now by offensive lineman Kevin Dotson, who is down in Texas, hopefully staying safe. And Kevin, what has this draft experience been like from the time you got the call to now knowing that you are a Pittsburgh Steeler and in the NFL? You know, it was, it's been a crazy experience, you know, from the call, from the first second that the call started and having that conversation with Coach Tomlin, it's been it's been crazy from that point on, you know. Um, I've been a Steeler fan all my life, and I know how our fans roll. But <laughs> the amount of the amount of support that I get from them already is is ridiculous. And I I try to do as much as I can to to just show my appreciation to the fans. You know, I I, I pretty much respond to I've, I've responded to probably over 300, 400 texts now. Just to just to get get people to know that I appreciate what they what they done for me, and you know, just saying, hey, we're we're happy that you're a Steeler, and I I, I want people to know that I am seeing those things, and it kind of kind of at the same time builds me a little fan base that I can come up there and first day have some people who who support me. All right, so explain to me how you became a Steelers fan, and I guess just how excited your family is, who are also Steelers fans. Yeah, you know, it kind of starts with my dad. Uh, he's been a Steeler fan since he was about eight, nine. Um, you know, and it's kind of crazy that he would be a Steelers fan, you know, not being anywhere near the Steelers because my dad is from uh, Mississippi. So uh, he, he's, he's been a fan all his life, and, you know, and living and growing up with my dad, you kind of grow into it just because – the way that they play football. And if, if you just watch the Steelers, you understand why you would become a Steelers fan. Because uh, you have to be a certain type of person to be a Steelers fan and be a, a Steelers player. And, uh, you know, that's, that's kind of what I've aspired to be. And being able to get this opportunity is it's just, it's, I can't even, I don't, it's, it's a God scene. Now, you played college at Louisiana, and everybody knows Ike Taylor, former Steeler, played there. Do you know him at all, and have you two spoken since you've been drafted? Yeah, he um, he was a uh, he came and did a uh, uh, like a speech uh, at our at our school, and you know he he did a little a message to me um, when I got drafted, and you know I, we haven't we haven't really been too too close to, to each other, you know. Never really got to talk to him outside of uh, out of outside of those things, but I plan to. All right, now your new offensive line coach Sean Surrett described you as a people mover. Uh, is that a fair description? Is it a compliment to you? And how would you assess your game and what you're bringing to the Steelers O line? I think it definitely is a compliment. You know, um, you know, saying a people mover just shows that I can get I get the job done no matter who it is. So, you know, and it's been my job. So it's still, I'm a, I'm a people mover. I get people out the way I do what I'm supposed to do. And if I have to do it violently, it, it comes to that. One thing that I really liked um, after you were drafted on the conference called the Pittsburgh Media, you described your art of trash talking. So for anybody who missed that, take me through what Kevin Dotson does to trash talk the opponent. So, you know, during the game, you know, it can get a little chippy out there, get a little, a little, uh, little get a, get a little mouthy out there. So, you know, to demoralize or you know, just to even just put somebody down even more, it kind of hurts their confidence throughout the entire game. Um, I'm coming out there, and I'm gonna say, the play is coming right in this gap right here. I'm just coming out saying it. <laughs> play is inside zone to the right. The play is coming right behind me so now what you got now what you gonna do about it <laughs> and, and once, once I beat them you know that kind of destroys their the their confidence in a way of like he told me what he was gonna do and I there's still nothing I could have did about it so that could really just hurt your psyche all right, now, did you tell this story or maybe talk about this with head coach Mike Tomlin? I know him and Kevin Colbert said that you had a chance to video chat with them prior to the draft. Uh, yeah, I, I think I, yeah, I told him. Uh, <laughs> I think it was a week before I told him about it. Uh, I had seen an interview talking to the uh, – they were talking to the office line coach, and he was like, um, 
we don't plan on him doing that. Um, you know, he could do it if it's still – if the plays still work. I don't really plan on doing it too much in the league. But, you know, if I get to that point where I can get that confidence in, who knows? O-lines, I think offensive lines everywhere, college and in the pros, are known for being such a tight-knit unit. Um, has any of the Steelers' offensive linemen reached out to you? Uh, none of the O-line have hit me up yet. Uh, I had Mo Mason Rudolph hit me up. Um, but, you know, offensive line, being offensive lineman is, you have to be, you have to be the tightest knit group because you are one unit. If one person mess up, everybody's getting the blame. It doesn't matter if it was just the right tackle, just the left tackle. It don't matter because the old line as a collective is going to get that blame. So the more tight knit you are and the more cohesive and knowing the plays and making sure the person next to you know the plays, it, it can all be the determining fact of having a great offensive line. And, you know, hanging out, hanging out with your um, offensive line and stuff outside of it kind of furthers that bond. And, you know, right now I'm, I'm even uh, hanging with my offensive lineman, uh, Robert Hunt, who just got drafted. So we're still, we're still going to hang out. So this thing kind of goes beyond just football. Absolutely. I know you said you've been shifting through hundreds of messages from Steelers fans on social media and text messages. I did see Ramon Foster, who recently retired from the Steelers, said, hey, he, he's an open book. He's willing to help you tell you whatever you need. Have you reached out to Ramon at all? I haven't. I haven't reached out to him. Uh, I, I've just seen a lot of people, um, you know, kind of hitting at me to take the 73. You know, <laughs> I don't really know yet uh, what I'm going to do. You know, I respect uh, Ramon. Moon Foster a lot. I really I love to uh, watch them play, but you know I, I kind of want to try to start my my own type of um, you know start my own legacy. I don't want to kind of fill the fill the blank in. You know if I do get seventy three, I make sure I make them proud. But you know I'm trying to start my own own little thing. All right, now I know you've played uh, the majority at guard, so interior is kind of your sweet spot. Center position, is that something you have any experience with or something you really want to focus on and also add that to your skills? Yeah, my, my brother um, was a center in, uh, in high school, so now he's been teaching me and trying to show me how to do center more. I've been training at center, but, you know, I, I wasn't as comfortable as I'm, I'm getting now. All right, and Steelers, they uh, seem to really like the strong bloodlines of the NFL and football guys. Uh, TJ Watt, just a few of the recent draft picks and whatnot. Uh, what are your family ties to the NFL and to football? Uh, you know, I have uh, two uncles who, who went to the league. One played for the Browns. He played, he played, ended up playing for four teams. He was drafted by the Panthers. He played most of the time in the, uh, in the Browns. Uh, Alvin McKinley. And I had one uh, uncle who played fullback uh, for the Cardinals, Dennis McKinley. Awesome. All right. Well, we uh, welcome to the Pittsburgh Steelers. Hope to see you soon and uh, stay safe down in Texas. Yes, ma'am.